Hi everyone, this is Bernard Bertrand, Lumix Ambassador. Today I'm going to talk about my first experience with this pretty impressive Lumix S5. This is not going to be another review about that brand new amazing piece of equipment. There is already many reviews made by big names on the internet. No, if you are following me on my channel, you know that I'm always trying to show you the equipment I work with and I try to show it at work instead of talking about specs. And this is what I'm going to do now. First of all, talking about the S5 is a tricky one. What are we talking about? That little camera got many video capabilities that the bigger brother, the Lumix S1 Edge, also have. It is also a real professional still image camera for photographers out there. And the size of the camera itself is actually smaller than the GH5, even if it's just a little bit smaller. So yes, it's a pretty impressive beast we have here. Of course, we all remember the big improvement from the GH4 to the GH5 back then, when discovering the in-body image stabilization. Since then, we find it in the entire Lumix S1 camera lineup. And you know that it's pretty impressive. Same thing on this tiny camera. As I mentioned, there is also many other video specificities that this little S5 shares with the S1H. Different beast anyway. I would say that the S1H is a real cine camera into a still image camera body. It's super compact after all. And I have been pretty busy lately. So unfortunately, I have not been able to shoot or test the S5 before. And a couple of days ago, I wanted to test it, finally. And what I love, of course, like everyone, is that it is ultra compact. And a few days ago, I did ask a friend of mine if he could spend a couple of hours with me testing a brand new camera. He is a professional MMA fighter and actor. So we went deep into the woods, as I had something in mind. I wanted to shoot anamorphic. And I knew that I would get really interesting effect with the anamorphic bokeh because of the sunlight passing through those trees. Close your ears and remember me. So we were there, the two of us, carrying a C stand, a small dead light, D4, with a tiny softbox, a counterbalance weight for the C stand, and my backpack. Nothing else. At the beginning, I had in mind to use the Ronin S, but I forgot to charge the battery of the Ronin S the night before. If you own a Ronin S, you know that the battery lasts forever. So I almost never put it on charge. So no gimbal that day. But again, if you are following me on my channel, you know that 90% of the time, I like to work handheld and floating around my subject with the camera. And this is totally okay since the GH5 and the dual image stabilization, of course. So this is exactly what I did. And thanks to the small size and weight of that camera, the image stabilization and the fully articulated screen, I could be keeping on floating with the camera like this for hours. Now a word about my anamorphic setup. I did use the exact same setup I'm using on the S1H. Here it is, the Lumix S5 with the MC21 adapter. Then you got the Helios 44.2. And this is super, super cheap actually. I would say, I was about to say super expensive. It's actually not, it's super cheap. I think I paid this one $75 or something like that. And then you have the big piece in the front, which is the Evascope 1.5. This is the scope that goes into the taking lens. This is the taking lens and this is the scope that the scope that actually is the anamorphic lens in front of it. So I can't, I'm not able to show you the oval uh, inside. And in front of it, you have the ND filter from Nissi. Okay, so this is my setup. This is the one I'm using with the S1H. And as you see, it's super compact. This fit 
in a really small backpack, no problem. I did post a video test of the Helios lens alone if you want to see how the image look like. Check it on my channel. And the Evascope is 1.5. I know that some of you would prefer 2.0. And this is what I tried also when I did use the Orion lenses. You can also check this on my channel. But I love this 1.5, it's more than enough to have interesting effects into flares and also the bokeh as you see into the video clip that I did. And I love it first of all because it's a real quality lens, nicely made and it's a solid piece of equipment. And of course it is a single focus. That means that I have to set the focus on my Helios lens to the maximum and then from there I'm pulling focus on the Evascope itself and that's it. And no matter what anamorphic lens you'll be using, and I believe also no matter what camera you will be using when shooting anamorphic, it is sometimes a bit tricky to pull the focus on your subject. As soon as you'll be shooting with an anamorphic scope on your camera, the peaking, the tool that helps you to check your focus, will be less visible. So you need to be careful with your focus. What I do in terms of focus, and this no matter if I'm shooting anamorphic or with regular spherical lenses, when shooting manual focus, I will set the focus at a certain distance from my model and then I leave it there during that take. And then I move myself to pull focus, literally. I pull focus with my body holding the camera in my hands to follow the movement of my subject. And if you already did some research on the Lumix S5, you already know that there is an enormous improvement in terms of autofocus system. And this improvement will apparently also come to the rest of the S family through a firmware update, I believe. But when shooting anamorphic, you will pull focus manually anyway. And when I'm shooting fashion, no matter what lens I'm using, I most of the time also like to pull focus manually, as I also love to get that in and out of focus feeling on my subject. So a word about my exposure and light. As you see in the backstage video, I did use the small Light D4. This is the little D4 that I did use uh, during that shoot with the softbox in front of it. The D4 was powered by a V-Lock mount battery using a simple D-Tap cable as I wanted to shape a kind of circle of light around him on those shots. And it brings something like a third or an half stop on him, not more than that. And this is what I wanted in order to be able to control my light on him without stepping too much onto the ambient light. If I pull down the exposure in post, you will see that the softbox is indeed slightly stronger than the ambient light. It also brings that little sparkle into the eyes. I own a complete Dedolite kit for years. This is actually what I'm using right now. I got the same kind of softbox on top, right in front of me, probably like uh, 70 centimeters away from my face. Then I got another Dedolite, this is a D9, but a D4 will also do the trick that reflects uh, right there into a circular reflector. And then I got the third uh, Dedolite D4 that hit my background to do the effect behind. In terms of exposure, I was most of the time on the 180 degree shutter rule. I said most of the time because I realized once that I was completely off. I was indeed supposed to shoot at 100th of a second as I was recording those images at 50 frames per second. And this is something that will not happen on the S1H, where you'll be able to choose your shutter angle instead of the shutter speed. Anyway, I'm of course using an ND filter on front of my Avascope, and I'm using a Nisi filter. The quality of those filters is excellent, and you have a stopper. That means that when you are actually passing from the minimum effect of your variable ND filter to the maximum, there's a stopper. There's no way you can pass out the limit. On my GH5, I still own an old variable in the filter that does not have those stoppers. So it may happen that you pass over or under the filter limit. And if you do, your footage is not usable. So no matter what brand you go for, choose one that has those stoppers like my Nissi ND filter. And as you see on those images, sometimes I was simply counterbalancing the sunlight with the Dido light. So it's a pretty simple setup I got there, nothing complicated. And this is the whole point. I've been able to carry into the woods a C-stand, a Dedolite, a counterbalancing weight 
for the C-stand. And all this also because the camera system itself with an anamorphic lens on fit on a super small backpack. And I will soon post about the shoot I did on the ship. I was using the GH5S. And if the S5 was out at that time, I would have taken it as I was carrying the GH5S on a gimbal the entire day for a week. There is no way I would have done this with the S1 or S1H. The GH5S was then the perfect tool for that specific job. A week on a ship, as we were stopping every day to go on trails, walking and climbing all day long. So you have to use the exact tool you need, depending on what you do. I love technique, especially when it comes to lightning. But all the technique does not have any sense to me, unless it is used for your own creativity. And it is indeed totally crazy to me to realize you can have so much opportunity with such a small camera. And as I mentioned, this is my very first proper test of the S5. And I wanted to share with you. And I will for sure come with more and more backstage video like this one. And if you have any question, please let it into a comment below. Thank you very much and see you next time.